Hello children, welcome back. How are you all doing children? Fine? Yes, very good. Today I have got a surprise for you children. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it is story time. I can hear some excitement over there. You all must be very happy. I know you all love to listen to stories. So today children, I am going to read you a story. Are you ready children? Shall I start? Okay, here we go with the story, the fox and the grapes. Once there was a fox who was very hungry and went in search for some food. He searched everywhere but he couldn't find anything that he could eat. Finally, with his stomach rumbling, he came upon a farmer's wall. On top of the wall were the biggest, juiciest grapes the fox had ever seen. The fox jumped high in the air to catch the grapes in his mouth. But he missed. He tried again and missed again. He tried a few more times but missed each time. Finally, the fox decided to go home all the while muttering, I am sure the grapes were sore anyway. Now, we come to the end of the story children. Did you like it? Yes. What is the moral that you learnt in this story children? Yes, I can hear some of you saying. Yes, the moral of the story is, it is easy to hate what you can't have. Did you get the meaning children? Many times we want many things uh, and when we don't get that thing you know what happens we put the blame on that thing saying that it's not good, it is useless all that. Isn't it children? Yes, you all are correct. So, we should not do that. When we don't get any things we should not blame the others. Is it clear children? Now children I want you to have a book and a pen with you. Okay, and whatever important points you come across in this poem as well as the activities and the tasks what are given to you, write it down in the book and write the answers also children because once you go back to the school, your teachers will be checking it and they will be assessing it. Is it clear children? Will you do it? Okay, now let us know about Rabindranath Tagore. Rabindranath Tagore was born on 7th May. 1861 at Kolkata. His parents were Devendranath Tagore and Sarada Devi. At the age of 8, he started writing poems. His traditional education began in Brighton, East Sussex, England at a public school. In 1878, he went to England to become a barrister to fulfill his father's wish. His notable works are Gitanjali, Gare Bhaire, Gora, Rabindra Sangeet, Amar Shonar, Bangla and other works. The Nobel Prize in Literature was bestowed on him in 1913 for his work Gitanjali which is a book of poems. He is also the composer of a national anthem Janagana Mana. He also founded the educational institution Vishwa Bharati at Shantini Ketan. Now, you came to know about Rabindranath Tagore children. Okay. Now, in your textbook, go through the page number 30. Over there, you have got information on Rabindranath Tagore. What I want you to do is, go through that information, gather some more information on Rabindranath Tagore, prepare a profile and post it in your WhatsApp. Will you do it children? Okay. Good. Let us know who is Upagupta. Upagupta who lived during circa 3rd century BC was a Buddhist monk. According to some stories in the Sanskrit test Ashoka Vadana, he was the spiritual teacher of the Mauryan emperor Ashoka. Upagupta's teacher was Sanavasi who was a disciple of Ananda, the Buddha's attendant. Okay, now you came to know about who is Upagupta. Let us know about the poem children now. The poem is about the story of a Buddhist monk Upagupta, a disciple of Lord Buddha and the dancing girl of Mathura Vasavadatta. Vasavadatta was a famous and a beautiful dancing girl. She was proud of her beauty, youth and her wealth. Upagupta was an ascetic, an epitome of kindness, wisdom and selflessness. One dark night. While walking, Vasavadatta stumbles over the body of Upagupta who was sleeping on the dusty road. 
Now children, let us know what happened next by reading the poem Upagupta by Rabindranath Tagore. Okay, here we go children. Upagupta, the disciple of Buddha, lay asleep on the dust by the city wall of Mathura. Lamps were all out, doors were all shut and stars were all hidden by the murky sky of August. Whose feet were those tinkling with anklets touching his breast of a sudden. He woke up startled and the light from a woman's lamp struck his forgiving eyes. It was a dancing girl starred with jewels, wearing a pale blue mantle, drunk with the wine of her youth. She lowered a lamp and saw the young face austerely beautiful. Forgive me young ascetic, said the woman, graciously come to my house, the dusty earth is not fit bed for you. The young ascetic answered, woman, go on your way. When the time is ripe, I will come to you. Suddenly, the black knight showed its teeth in a flash of lightning. The storm growled from the corner of the sky and the women trembled in fear of some unknown danger. A year has not yet passed. It was a evening of a day in April, in spring season. The branches of the wayside trees were full of gay notes of the flute came floating in the warm spring air from afar. Upagupta passed through the city gates and stood at the base of the rampart. Was that a woman lying at his feet in the shadow of the mango grove? Struck with the black pestilence, her body spotted with sores of smallpox, she was hurriedly driven away from the town to avoid a poisonous contagion. The ascetic sat by her side, took her head on his knees and moistened her lips with water and smeared her body with sandal balm. Who are you, merciful one? said, asked the woman. The time at last has come to visit you and I am here, replied the young ascetic. Is it clear children? Did you listen to my reading? Okay, now it's your turn children. What I want you to do is you have to start reading. Go through the poem and start reading the poem with correct pronunciation, intonation, stress and pause. Did you get it children? Okay, start reading children. Start reading loudly. Did you finish reading? Okay, very good children. Now, let's understand the meaning of certain important words that you come across in the poem which you find it very difficult. Okay, now let's move on to the glossary. The first glossary is disciple. The meaning of the word disciple is follower of a religious leader. Now, look at this picture children. What can you make out? Yes, you can see Lord Buddha sitting over here surrounded by his followers or disciples. Now children, I want you to identify the word disciple in the poem. Okay, I will give you some time. Just go through the poem children. Where will you come across this word disciple? Yes, read the poem. Did you get it? Yes. The sentence or the line where you get the word disciple is Upagupta was a disciple of Buddha. In the beginning itself you will get that sentence. Is it clear children? The next word is tinkling. The meaning of the word tinkling is making a pleasant metallic sound. Now look at this picture children. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it is called as a wind chime. Where do you find it children? Yes, it is usually kept hanging in front of the main entrance okay because whenever the wind blows the metals will dash against each other and they make a beautiful pleasant sound which is very nice to hear that sound only we call it as tinkling sound now find out where you come across this word tinkling go to the second para children in the second para you will get the word tinkling Yes, did you read the second para? Yes, did you get the sentence? Did you get that line? Yes, that line is whose feet were those tinkling with anklets. So, that is the meaning of the word tinkling. Now, the next 
word is startled. The meaning of the word startled is extremely surprised. Now, look at this picture children. What can you make out? Yes, you can see a lady. She is extremely surprised. Looking at expression because maybe she has heard a bad news or something like that. She is very much startled. Yes, now see in the poem, where do you come across this word startled? Because just now you learned the meaning. The meaning of the word is startled is extremely surprised. Now, in the poem, where do you get this word? Yes, I will give you some time. Go through the poem. Yes, go through the second para. In that para, you come across this word startled. Upagupta woke up startled. The next word is austerely beautiful. The meaning is reflecting the beauty of the acetate. Now, children, look at this picture. Who is that in the picture? Yes, it is Lord Buddha. So, how is his face seen, children? Yes, it looks very serene, peaceful, calm. This call it as austerely beautiful. Yes, now I want you to find out the line where you come across this word austerely beautiful. Yes, go through, see the third paragraph, read the third paragraph, there you will come across this word austerely beautiful. Yes, did you get that line? So, the line is, the ascetic's face was austerely beautiful. Did you get it? Now, the next glossary word is full of blossoms. The meaning for this is heavy with flowers. Now, look at this picture children. What do you see? You see a tree full of flowers. Usually in the spring season, we can see that almost all the trees are full of flowers. Now, identify where these words come children. Yes, I will give you some time. Yes, you will get that word in the para number 6. Go through paragraph 6, go through stanza 6. Did you get those words? Yes, the sentence is, the branches of the tree were full of blossoms. Did you get it children? Yes, the next is black pestilence. The meaning for this word is, any infectious disease that spreads quickly and kills a lot of people. Now, look at this picture children. It is a picture of a smallpox virus. In nowadays, there is no smallpox children because it is completely eradicated. But in the olden days, you know, when people used to get smallpox, it used to spread from one person to another person and many people were being killed. See where it comes children in the poem. Yeah, go through the poem. Go through stanza 8. Over there, you will get the word pestilence, black pestilence. Did you get it? Yes, she was struck with black pestilence. Did you get it? The next word is smeared. The meaning for the word smeared is applied. Look at the picture children. You can see the picture of a lady. She has applied cream to her face. So, where do you come across this word in the poem? It is the last stanza. In the last stanza, you come across this word smeared. So, it is given, he smeared a body with sandal balm. Did you get it children? Rampart, a high wide wall of earth built around a castle, town etc. Look at this picture children. What do you make out? Yes, it is a very huge wall. Usually, the kings, when they were ruling over the kingdom to safeguard themselves from the enemies, what they used to do children? Yes, they used to build huge walls to protect themselves, what we call it as fort wall or it is also called as rampart. Is it clear children now about the glossary words? Did you understand? Have you written down the glossary words and their meanings in the notebook? Okay, now you have got a task to do children. Now, what I want you to do is, any of you have come to know the meaning of the glossary words, you have to make use of them in sentences of your own. Will you do it children? Okay, make sentences, write it in your notebook and show it to your teachers when you go back to the school. Okay, now, now let us recapitulate whether you have understood the poem. 
So, I will be giving you few questions. What you have to do is you have to write down the question as well as the answers in your book and later on I will give you the answers. Let us check and see whether you have written correctly. Now, let us go on to the first question. Why did Upagupta wake up startled? Yes, children write down that question. Have you written? Now, find out the answer for this question children. See in the poem. Go through the second stanza, read the second stanza, you will get the answer over there. Did you get it children? Fine, start writing it. You have finished writing? Okay. Now, let us see whether you have written the correct answer. Yes, the answer is, when Vasavadatta, a dancing girl stumbled over Upagupta who slept on the dusty road by the city wall of Mathura, he woke up startled. Did you get it children? Have you written it correctly? Okay. Now, let us move on to the second question. Why do you think the ascetic did not accept the invitation of the dancing girl? Take down the question children, write it down in your book. Have you finished writing? Okay. Now, check for the answer. Go through the fourth stanza children. Read the fourth stanza. Have you read it? Yes, did you get the answer? Fine. Okay, write it down children. Have you written it down? Yes, very good. Now, let us check whether you have written it correctly. The answer is, Upagupta was the disciple of Buddha. He was an epitome of kindness and wisdom. He used to lead a simple life, so it was not appropriate for him to go to the house of dancing girl. Is it clear children? Have you written the answer? Okay. Now, let us move on to the third question. How is the spring season described in the poem? Yes, children, go through the textbook, read the sixth stanza. Did you start reading? Did you get the answer? Okay. Write it down children now. You finished writing? Very good. Now, let us check whether the answer you have written is correct. The answer is, in the spring season, the branches of the trees were full of blossom. Happy songs of flute came floating in the warm spring air from afar. Did you check up with all the answers children? Have you written every answers correctly? Okay, very good. So, that shows that you have really understood the poem. Okay, write it neatly children and mention the dates. Your teachers will be checking it. Now, let us go to the concept imagery. Uh, take down the definition of the word imagery children. Imagery is the use of language to evoke pictures in the minds of the readers or listeners. It means in languages sometimes when we read certain words or sentences immediately a picture related to that sentence will come to our mind and we will start imagining as if that particular thing is there right in front of us. These type of words or sentences we call them as imagery. It is a vivid descriptive language that appeals to one or more of the senses like sight, hearing, touch, smell and taste. These sentences or words they are related to the five sensory organs. The word imagery is associated with mental pictures means immediately a picture will come to your mind. For example, now you read this line children, it was dark and dim in the forest and when you read this sentence immediately a picture of a forest which is dark and dim will come to your mind, isn't it? Just like the picture what you see over here. This is connected to the visual images means what you see through your eyes. Okay. Now, let us move on to the second one. Now, when you read this sentence, the children were screaming and shouting in the field. Immediately, what picture comes to your mind children? Yes, look at this picture. This type of a picture will come to your mind where you can see the field and in the field, there are many children screaming, shouting and playing. So, this is connected to the sense of hearing or auditory sense. The next 
she whiffed the aroma of brewed coffee. Now look at this picture. What do you see in this picture? Yes, you can see a lady. She is trying to inhale the smell or aroma of coffee. So this is connected to the sense of smell or olfactory sense. The next sentence, the girl ran her hands on a soft satin fabric. Look at this picture. Yes, in this picture, what do you see? You see a piece of satin cloth. And what is the lady doing? Yes, she is touching the cloth to see how soft it is. So, this is connected to the sense of touch or tactile. Now, the next sentence. The fresh and juicy oranges are very cold and sweet. Wow! Immediately, what picture comes to your mind, children? Yes, a picture like this where you can see fresh and juicy oranges which are cold and sweet. So, this is connected to the sense of taste or gustatory sense. Now, I am sure that you have come to understood this concept, imagery. I, you have got a task to do here, children. They go through the poem and try to identify the imagery words or sentences. Is it clear? Now start reading the poem children. Underline the imagery words and sentences. Start doing it. Yes, have you finished doing it? Okay. Now let us check up whether you have identified the imageries correctly. Now look at these sentences. Upagupta lying on the dusty ground. You came across this sentence, Upagupta lying on the dusty ground. And it is an imagery. And when you read that sentence, children, immediately what picture comes to your mind? A picture of a person lying on the ground. And in this poem, you can see Upagupta lying on the dusty ground. Can you see it in this picture, children? The stars were hidden by the murky sky of August. This is also an imagery because the moment you read that sentence, immediately a picture of a sky where there are no stars at all can come to your mind. The tinkling sound of anklets worn on the feet. Immediately this picture comes to your mind where a lady, she has worn anklets on her feet. So this also we call it as imagery. Drunk with the wine of youth. This picture drunk with the wine of youth. The moment you start reading this line, you know, immediately a picture of a beautiful girl, you know, who is very young uh, will come to your mind. So, this also we call it as imagery which you come across in the poem. The black knight showed its teeth in a flash of lightning. So, when you look at this picture, you can see it is a very dark black night and it is about to rain and there is lightning. And all this, what do we call them as? We call them as imagery. Why means? Because the moment you read this sentence, immediately a picture related to that words and sentences comes to your mind. Is it clear children? Yes, very good. Now, let us uh, move on to the figure of speech irony. Now, take down this definition in your book. Irony is a contrast between what is expected and what actually happens. Means, irony is a contrast. Contrast means it is a difference between what is expected. You want something to happen like this and what actually happens. But how you want it to happen, it will not happen in that manner. Something different will happen. That you call it as irony. There are three types of irony, verbal, dramatic and situational irony. Note it down children in your book. Okay. Now, through examples, let us see what is the difference between these three types of irony. Now, look at this picture children. What do you see in this picture? Yes, you can see a car and you can also see a man over there. Is it clear? And now, what has happened to this car? Yes. The car is damaged. Okay, and just imagine you have got your own car, and when your car gets damaged, how do you feel? Will you feel happy or will you feel sad? Yes, you will feel very sad. And here in this picture, what is this man doing? What is he saying? He is saying, Lucky me. Lucky me means I am really very lucky. 
okay and when do you say you are lucky when something good happens okay and a car getting damaged is it something lucky no so here that person doesn't mean that but he has said that word what someone says is not actually what they mean this type of a situation you call it as verbal irony did you get it okay now let's move on to the next irony look at this picture children it's a photo from the movie jaws okay now when you look at this picture what do you see yes you can see a girl who is swimming at the top and underneath in the water what do you see yes you can see a shark okay and imagine that you are watching this movie jaws and you know now very soon what the shark is going to do yes it's going to attack the girl we know the audience who are watching the movie we know that the shark is going to attack the girl but the girl doesn't know about it so in such a type of a situation where the people who are watching the movie watching the drama knows this is going to happen but the character will not know about it that type of a situation we call it as dramatic irony where the audience knows something that one or more characters do not okay now let's move on to the next one what do you see in this picture children yes you can see a cat chasing a dog usually how it is what do we see usually a dog only will be chasing a cat but here it is completely the opposite a cat is chasing the dog okay so what actually happens is not what is expected to happen what should happen that is not happening something different is happening then that type of situation we call it as situational irony i'm sure you must have understood what is imagery and what is irony okay and in this poem upagupta also you come across irony here like example in the beginning stage Uh, the dancing girl goes to upagupta and invites him home but upagupta refuses but in the last part in the end you come to know that when upagupta goes and takes care of her she is unable to recognize him that is the irony in the poem did you get it okay now let us move on to the home assignment the first one is write the summary of the poem in your own words not exceeding more than 100 words the second assignment is make a list of imagery and irony words and sentences that you come across in this poem so these are the two assignment note it down in your book and write the answers neatly you when you go back to the school your teachers will be checking it is it clear children have you written it down okay fine good now before i sign off don't forget to scan the qr code children okay don't forget it and now i come to the end of this session i hope this session was very interesting and you must have really understood it thank you